Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. It is a beautiful day. I'm outside playing with my plants, doing some repots, playing with my akuba. This is a plant I've wanted to talk about on this channel for a while. I don't know why haven't we talked about it. They're so pretty. Well, we've surely talked about them in vlogs. I know we have before. It'd be nice to go ahead and do something that's dedicated just to this plant specifically. If you follow my channel, you know I'm always trying to find things that have really vibrant, bold textures, things that just look different from the norm. I mean, some of them are still pretty basic things, bird of paradise, those kinds of plants, lots of tropical plants, but I'm in zone six. So the majority of anything that's in a pot, that has to go inside during the winter time. There are a variety of plants that I grow out here, however, that look tropical, but aren't. And I think that those would be fun things to talk about. So I want to start with the Akuba. The Akuba Japonica variegata. I don't know. This is the Mr. Goldstrike variety, commonly called the gold dust plant. Older names were Akuba Japonica crotonifolia because these are very similar to the gold dust croton very different in the sense that they are much more cold hardy. Much, 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 much more cold hardy. No, not a tropical, but a broadleaf evergreen. Nice big leaves, serrated edges, those fun splotches of color from the variegation make them stand out. A good plant for high contrast and low light areas. These are low light plants. I'm in zone six. I've mentioned that multiple times. These are fully hardy into zone seven. Zone six is where things start to get pushed somewhat, but there are things that can be done to help get them through the winter time. First, I'll just go over basic care with the Akuba Japonica. And I'm speaking specifically about the Mr. Gold Strike and the other just variegated gold dust plants. There are actually a lot of really fun varieties of Akuba Japonica that have all different types of, uh, well, the leaf forms aren't that different, but various forms of variegation on the leaves. Within those, there are some varying levels of cold hardiness. That's why I'm focusing mostly on this one because it's the one that's the most tried and true. It's been around for a pretty long time. So we know a little bit more about it and how to grow the plant as far as pushing it into colder regions. Okay, Akuba Japonica, gold dust plant. Generally considered hardy zones six through nine, but zone six can be a little bit more of a challenge. We'll talk about that. They're a shade loving evergreen perennial. They have some versatility to them, but they do prefer a well-drained organically rich soil. Typically these will grow four to six feet wide, four to six feet high. They can be pruned to maintain the shape and size that you want, but they are slow growers. You're not going to have to prune these very often. They can be grown indoors. These actually make a fine house plant. Most of the things I find on them generally say that they are considered to be toxic to dogs and cats. It's a plant to keep away from curious mouths. All right, so there's the rundown. We can dive in a little bit deeper into some of those things like the light so they are a shade lover but they'll be fine with some filtered light in the morning afternoon sun is what is really best to avoid with these plants they will scorch very easily the more warm your climate then the more sensitive they're going to be to the sun usually at least that's been my observation like up in the pacific northwest i see these get a decent amount of sun for a shade loving plant and uh, they do much better than they would here down in st louis that's a similar thing with azaleas and rhododendrons too the more mild the climate usually a little bit more sun they can take there's still factors to consider though with the intensity of the sun the angle of the earth they can get kind of complicated for the most part morning sun filtered light throughout the rest of the day an excellent plant to put underneath evergreen shrubs one thing i've learned through experience growing this plant is that under planting them underneath things like maples and birches and oaks deciduous trees they don't always do as well because in the winter the trees are under lose their leaves and then it's bye bye shade and then you just have cooked scorched akubas underneath there great plant to have up against the east side of the house where they'll get that morning sun and you've noticed this one is in a pot that's because i do like to move these in sometimes during the winter time i'll have some in the ground next year i've grown them in the ground before on many occasions and then the trees they were under aged and had to cut them down and then they got too much sun and those are gone i'll have a whole bunch to plant next year which is exciting but for this year they're all still potted when temperatures drop below 10 degrees fahrenheit i'll go ahead and scoot them into my garage they don't need to stay very warm i just don't want them to go below that that's when you start to get leaf burn and they don't look too good usually between zero and 10 degrees fahrenheit below zero for sure and then anything that's potted is much more susceptible to the colds i also have the option of just putting a blanket or a burlap or a frost cloth something like that over them especially if they're in the ground when they're in a pot they're still more exposed so i'll probably just because they're so easy to move just move them but i have had multiple akubas that i kept in pots for many years and left them outside the majority of the winter 
except for those few really, really, really cold nights. When I plant these outdoors, I do tend to prefer to plant them someplace that's going to be sheltered from really harsh winds during the winter time. In the winter time, a lot of the damage on these plants comes from the really strong winds, the dry air, and the very intense sun. So by having them up against the wall, having some kind of barrier around them to help block that makes a really, really big difference. These in zone six, aren't probably going to look very good if they're in an open and exposed location because again it's like right on the cusp of where they can grow and where they can't. So a sheltered position if you have a warm little microclimate spot in your yard that doesn't get a ton of sun so be a good option. With all of my broadleaf evergreens in the late fall I like to give them a heavy spray down with an anti-transpirant with something like wilt proof whatever you can find really. It's just important to make sure to soak the tops and the bottoms of those leaves. I like to do it when temperatures are above 50. We usually have multiple days in the winter where it will be rather warm, so whenever we have those days during the winter, I like to reapply. So ideally, I would reapply every single month. That's not always an option, just depends on how cold the winter is. And again, burlap, frost claws, all of those things, if it drops below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you can just throw those over the plant, and that will make a very, very big difference. I'm talking about in the ground, by the way. In a pot, you might just want to move them in, just to be safe. You get a normal fall mulching, just like all of my other plants do. And I do give them a decent mulch in the winter just like I do with any of my perennials just enough to go around the base a few inches just help keep the roots warm help hold in some moisture the winters here are pretty dry we get some precipitation but not a ton that's why it's important to make sure that they get the mulch when they're in the ground and then that they get that anti-transpirant sprayed on them or that I at least have some sort of protection ready to pop over them in case there's a sudden cold snap. The Akubas don't need pruning all that often. Maybe every other year something like that because they're pretty slow growers. Slow to moderately slow growers. In the home they might need to be pruned a little bit more often and that's just because there's not the same airflow around them so they may end up getting a little bit more stretched out and a little bit more leggy by making cuts across the top that's going to send this hormones back down to bounce back up and push out new growth and get them more bushy down below. These will have red berries that come out the ends in the wintertime similar to a holly but you have to have males and females in order to get those berries. As far as pests are concerned scales really the only one that I hear about very often but it's still I don't it's not that often I don't know how common scale is on these. If you're growing them indoors I would imagine spider mites would probably very much enjoy this foliage but I don't know for sure. And also something that's important to mention here is that these are very prone to root rot so that's why it's important that the soil drains really well. If you have a really sandy soil you may want to amend it so it doesn't drain too quickly because if the soil's really dry the plant's not going to be happy. But on the flip side of that a clay soil may end up drowning the plant. If these leaves if that foliage starts to turn black on you that's probably root rot. Acting leaves can also be the result result of sudden changes in light though so sometimes that can just be sun scorch but if they're limp and black that's that's probably root rot probably some sort of phytophora going on down there and they are acid loving plants so I try and fertilize them in the spring and then usually again in the midsummer with a well-balanced fertilizer made for evergreens that like acid a holly tone something like that overall these are really fun sturdy plants to grow I love seeing these in gardens planted up with hookahs and lots of other shade loving plants the variegation on the foliage of course makes them stand out. It helps brighten a dark area. It helps draw the eye back. So they're nice to have around, especially in those dark shady areas. The more north you go, the colder the climate gets, the fewer options that there are for having a different appeal from things other than just hollies and boxwoods. And in my opinion, they have a fun tropical appearance to them just because they look so similar to the gold dust crotons. If tropical is not your thing, it's not like this is going to look out of place. Like I said, plant these up with hookahs, different types of shade loving grasses, hardy gingers that'll grow down below them with some fun rocks. There's, there's a lot you can do with them. And I'm just a sucker for a plant that has versatility as far as the ways you can use the plant. These look great for getting that tropical aesthetic like I mentioned, but they also look nice planted up for a more formal appearance because they have a slow growth so they don't tend to shoot out and get unruly like really at all at the most I really don't think that this would need to be pruned to maintain a nice shape any more than every other year these are fairly versatile fairly sturdy plants it's not too much sun not too much water not too little water I mean it's a shrub like I said very similar to an azalea or a rhododendron as far as your care goes the main thing is knowing your winter so if you're in zone six and you want to give these a try maybe even warm zone five if you have a nice microclimate in your yard I highly suggest them but be prepared to cover them up if temperatures get too cold for too long want to get something over them 
spray the leaves on with an anti-transpirant just to give them a little bit of extra protection. Okay, that's all, just a spotlight, just a plant. I really enjoy a fun option if you're trying to bring a different kind of texture and interest to a garden. Maybe you don't live someplace where you can grow many really big, bold leaved plants like this one. So what are some of your experiences growing the Akuba, the Akuba japonicas? Comment down below. I love hearing from everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Do you have a favorite variety? Like I said, this is the Mr. Gold Strike. It's kind of the most basic, the most common of the different cultivars that are out there but there are some really fun ones like some absolutely beautiful ones that have more white creamy variegation on the foliage and I think those are gorgeous but they're not quite as hardy if I ever see those available in a larger size I will give them a try usually when I see them they're in little bitty pots and those just really aren't the best way to go when you're trialing something for cold hardiness I was going to mention propagation but I'm probably going to do a propagation video late winter or early spring but essentially it's very similar to a croton where you'll want to get at least a three inch cutting remove the majority of the foliage leave a little bit cut those leaves in half and stick them into a moisture retentive soil that's nice and sterile and clean something over the top to hold in some humidity and they should root out for you and of course dipping the cutting in a rooting hormone that's always helpful right there, there's the rundown on that one i'll get more specific when i go ahead and take some cuttings and start propagating them on my own all right hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye